How many people think cholesterol causes heart disease? Okay, it's gonna change. There aren't many things I enjoy talking about more than cholesterol. I wanna provide you with the facts today to help you better understand the role of cholesterol in the body so you can make informed decisions about your heart health. There's so much information about cholesterol and the role it plays in our bodies. People have been led to believe that cholesterol is a terrible thing. I call it cholesterol mania. Folks, it's a myth that cholesterol is the bad guy when it comes to heart health. The hypothesis that when you eat high fat, that then that produces high cholesterol and the cholesterol produces heart disease is wrong in every one of those links. This whole idea that dietary fat causes cholesterol problems is sort of a myth. The whole idea that uh, cholesterol problems lead to heart disease is a myth. The theory is completely and totally wrong. It was uh, a theory that was made out of whole cloth and then pushed. The, the term artery clogging saturated fat, it's as though it's all one word. It's become part of the, the zeitgeist. Everybody knows saturated fat is bad for you, but when you get back and you start looking at the medical literature and you root back through to find out where this whole idea came from, it's bogus. So, how did we get the whole cholesterol hypothesis wrong? How did we go so far wrong with this? And it's a really interesting story. It starts with rabbits. And around in the turn of the century, there were a bunch of Russian experiments with rabbits where they found that if you fed rabbits cholesterol, lots of cholesterol, then their little arteries would get filled with plaque and they would have the signs of what they now know and didn't know then, but now know is atherosclerosis. Of course, the, uh, the fact that rabbits are vegetarians and don't know how to process animal foods didn't really occur to them. If you feed dogs or baboons the same diet, it does not happen. But it did happen with rabbits, and this was sort of floating as an idea in the science community. Nobody did anything with it. The plants, the plants do not contain any cholesterol, and animals are the only source of cholesterol, and herbivores do not eat animal products. Rabbits, being a herbivore, are not designed to digest animal fat and cholesterol. So when it is fed high doses of cholesterol, one should not be surprised if the cholesterol winds up getting stuck in any part of the poor rabbit, including his blood vessels. Feeding high doses of fat and cholesterol to omnivores, like rats and dogs, does not produce atherosclerotic lesions in them. How did this happen? In the 1950s, a biochemist named Ansel Keys published a study that compared heart disease and fat consumption in a half dozen countries. The more fat, the more heart disease. The trend line was unmistakable. Just one little problem. Keys left out countries where people eat a lot of fat but have very little heart disease, like Holland and Norway. He also left out countries where people don't eat much fat but do have a lot of heart disease, like Chile. In fact, Keyes had reliable data from 22 countries and the results were all over the place. But you can't make a big splash in the scientific community with a trend line that looks like this. So Keyes did what any dedicated researcher would do. He threw out the data that didn't fit and published his results. His punishment for this bit of scientific chicanery was to get his picture on the cover of Time magazine. Keyes became known as the father of the lipid hypothesis, which says that eating saturated fat raises the cholesterol in your blood, and high cholesterol in your blood clogs your arteries and causes heart disease. Evidence against fat wilts upon close scrutiny. In his six-country study, Ansel Keyes ignored data available from 16 other countries that did not fall in line with his desired graph. If he had chosen these six other countries on the left side, and even more strikingly on the bottom right, he could have shown that increasing percent of calories from fat in the diet reduces the number of deaths from heart disease. If Keyes had included all 22 countries in his study, the result would have been a clutter of dots like this. In fact, it turns out that people who have the highest percentage of saturated fat in their diets have the lowest risk of heart disease. Oh, this is really great. Uh, in this study, they actually 
uh, this was an intervention. This was a real clinical study. They replaced saturated fat in the diet of this particular cohort during the study, they, re they, they replaced it with carbohydrates, thinking, whoa, we're going to really see a drop, aren't we? And what happened was cardiovascular disease went up. And that caused the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, which is not exactly a wide-eyed radical organization, to write an editorial saying, what the, you know what? Saturated fat prevents coronary artery disease? It's a paradox. And Dr. Castelli, uh, the third director of the study in 1992 in the Archives of Internal Medicine wrote, and I'll just read it, in Framingham, Massachusetts, the more saturated fat one ate, the more cholesterol one ate, the more calories one ate, the lower the person's serum cholesterol. We found that people who ate the most cholesterol, ate the most saturated fat, ate the most calories, weighed the least, and were the most physically active. So for those of you who are not into nutrition or don't know, this is Walter Willett. He's arguably the most respected nutritional epidemiologist in the country, if not the world. He's the head of the nutrition department at the Harvard School of Public Health. And he's the lead researcher on two of the longest and most important studies ever done in nutritional epidemiology, which is the study of you know, what do people eat and what diseases do they get. Those are the studies that are called the Nurses' Health Study and the Health Professionals' Follow-Up Study. And this is what he said after 30 years. He said, the relationship of fat intake to health is one of the areas that we've examined in detail over the past 20 years in our two large cohort studies, the Nurses Health Study and the Health Professionals Follow-Up Study. Who wants to guess what he said next? We have found virtually no relationship between the percentage of calories from fat and any important health outcome. None. There's actually no such thing as good or bad cholesterol. All cholesterol is good. Uh, cholesterol is essential for life, not important for life, essential for life. There are a number of uh, functions that couldn't exist in the body without cholesterol, but perhaps two of the most obvious are demonstrated here. The first is the production of very important hormones in our body that we've already heard a little bit about in the past two days. Um, and there's very complex pathways that will turn cholesterol into these um, really important hormones, androgens, et cetera. The other one is um, in the presence, that, in the role that they play in the uh, bilayer membrane of a cell, virtually every cell in the human body for that matter. In fact, when you look at a cell in cross-section, you can see that it's not only composed of a bilayer, two lipids opposing each other, but these lipids create a transmembrane environment and hold within them complex proteins that play an essential role in everything our cells do. So if you didn't actually have cholesterol in the wall of a cell, and in a moment I'm going to tell you how much cholesterol you have in the wall of a cell, these cells wouldn't be able to move, they wouldn't have the fluidity to tr interact with each other, nor would they be able to contain these very important and necessary ligands that control permeability. So if you remember one thing from this slide, no cholesterol means no life, and in fact there are rare genetic disorders where endogenous production of cholesterol is severely limited, and these uh, patients do suffer um, early morbidity and mortality. Well, what about cholesterol? Uh, as with saturated fat, it is not a villain. On the contrary, cholesterol is critical for good health. It is essential, an essential component of every cell in the body. And although few doctors know this, more than 20 studies have shown that elderly people with a high cholesterol level in their blood live longer than those who have a low cholesterol. Cholesterol is the mother of all hormones. It is converted into stress and sex hormones like cortisol, testosterone, and estradiol in the adrenal cortex. The liver turns cholesterol into bile salts needed for intestinal absorption of fats and the fat-soluble vitamins. A, D, E, and K. And when exposed to UVB rays in sunlight or a tanning salon, the skin turns cholesterol into vitamin D. Cholesterol is also the body's fire brigade. It repairs damage to the body's tissues, particularly the damage in arteries inflammation does to cause atherosclerosis. Blaming cholesterol for atherosclerosis is like blaming firemen for the fire they have come to put out. Along with saturated fats, cholesterol is an integral component of cell membranes. 
brain and nerve tissue have the highest uh, concentration of cholesterol in the body. It is a key component in forming synapses, cell connections, needed for good mental functioning, learning, and memory. What else does cholesterol do? Well, it lubricates the skin. It creates neurotransmitter function in the brain. I mean, there's documented evidence that when cholesterol levels fall, more cognition problems can occur. We need cholesterol for neurotransmission of those impulses. So folks, if cholesterol is not the major culprit in poor heart health, well, what is? Well, there's lots of factors here. Let me tell you about sugar. Sugar is the major inflammation situation in the heart. Why? Because sugar elicits an insulin response. And we know that insulin is the most endothelial, unfriendly hormone around. What do I mean by that? Well, in the lining of blood vessels, you have what we call a basement membrane. And when you are putting sugar into your body, and it's not just a sugar you put in your tea or your coffee. It can be bagels and crackers and pastas and, you know, processed carbs, white flours. We call it a high glycemic index because the sugar gets into the bloodstream quickly. What's the real causes of heart disease? Number one with a bullet is inflammation. You know that little slide I had about the little particles getting stuck in there? What do they get stuck in? If they're floating by smooth walls, they don't, there's nothing to get stuck in. They get stuck in little pockets of inflammation. Inflammation is what produces the conditions under which plaque develop. So inflammation is the real cause of heart disease. So what causes inflammation? The answer is just about everything. If you're walking, if you're breathing, you've got inflammation in your body. Everybody does. The question is how much and what does it do? Foods like this cause inflammation. Medicines can cause inflammation. Toxins in the air and the water can cause inflammation. Stress causes inflammation. Millions of things cause inflammation. You want a nice inflammatory diet? There it is. Consumption of butter has dropped precipitously, while cancer and heart disease has soared. The rise in cancer and heart disease cannot be blamed on a high saturated fat diet. These books prove beyond a reasonable doubt that today's chronic diseases, such as diabetes, heart disease, obesity, stroke, cancer, are nutritional diseases, a resulting of eating a low-fat, mainly polyunsaturated vegetable oil, high-carbohydrate diet. So stress, in combination with a sugary diet and trans fats, are really the denominators of poor heart health. So what are the key takeaways here? Look, folks, cholesterol is found at the scene of the crime, but it's not the perpetrator. Cholesterol does a lot of good things. Remember, it's protective. It's a life-sustaining molecule. Saturated fats, they're not too bad. It's all about balance. I mean, look, I don't want you to eat 100% of your calories in saturated fats, but you can put them in your diet. Certainly 10% of your calories can be saturated fat. The real culprits, and what I want you to get is this, sugars and trans fats are their killers and they can create poor heart health.